he didn't deserve a red cent from me because he was full of shit and he was about to catch these hands. Give me my. This is Peace the Gypsy checking in, and today I'm here to bring you five times where I was almost scammed in Southeast Asia. So I think this will be very, very helpful because, you know, a lot of times you come out to this side of the world for the first time and you don't really know what to expect. So, you know, it can be glitz and glamour, you can have just a great time, but there are certain things you need to keep in mind, you know, especially um, being aware of your surroundings and things of that nature. So let's get to it. Now, three of these five have to do with transportation slash taxis. So if you haven't had a chance to check out my things to know before coming to China, please check that out because I go into detail about black taxis in that video. So first one, uh, basically it was the first time I had an experience with a black taxi. I was in Shenzhen and that's in South China close to Hong Kong so um, I was getting out of the um, airport in Shenzhen and I needed to take a taxi to my hotel and I was totally unaware of black taxis they literally scout you like as you're leaving the airport they're like taxi 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 so I didn't think anything of it I just thought these guys are really ambitious they really want you know someone in their taxi so something didn't feel right I was walking like away from the taxi spot and there was like a parking lot this guy was taking me to so I called up my Pakistani friend who I was dating at the time and he speaks fluent Chinese so I'm like yeah I don't feel right I'm walking with this guy to a parking lot can you talk to him so I hand the phone over he starts talking to the guy in Chinese I can tell they're kind of going back and forth about something so he hands the phone back to me and my friend is like yeah get out of there because he is trying to charge you like 300 yuan and that's basically like $45 for a taxi to my airport which shouldn't cost me even half that much so I literally was just like booyah which is I don't want and I went to the original taxi area. People were still trying to scout me. I was like, boo yow, boo yow, boo yow, boo yow, boo yow, boo <laughs> I wasn't like that, but that's how I felt inside. Second one, similar experience in Shanghai, but I knew what to expect from the first one. However, it was still very aggravating because this one particular guy was following me, like literally hounding me and I had to be more aggressive so like I mentioned in a previous video um, the China made me video um, I had to learn how to assert myself more being out here and I had to literally like really get aggressive with this guy so I was picking on my Papa John's it was a very busy time I had just finished my classes for the day and I could not get a taxi like I was literally waiting for a taxi for like 15 20 minutes so finally this guy pulls up on his motorbike and it's one with like a cover, so it's kind of like legit, whatever. And he's talking to me, I told him that I only know a little bit of Chinese, and he's just kind of like, you know, where are you going? And I told him my address, not verbatim, but my area. And he's like, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I already knew this was gonna be an issue later on when he got me to my place. I knew I didn't wanna pay any more than like, a little bit more than a taxi. I paid him a little bit more than a taxi, which would have been a dollar fifty, and um, for about a ten-minute ride. So he was trying to charge me two hundred yuan, which is like thirty dollars. <laughs> thirty dollars versus a dollar fifty, and I went off. Like I was really like, I've been living here for almost a year in Chinese, of course, and I was just like, I really felt some type of way because it's like I can't imagine day in and day out trying to get over on somebody you know it just really really bothered me so um, I was angry for a while <laughs> I gave him 20 um, I shouldn't have gave him anything but he was trying to follow me into my building so I just went ahead and gave him 20 which is like three dollars but fourth situation is basically a shopping experience so they have like a lot of little shopping malls and like 
you know, very local sort of places. Um, you also have markets, we have one called Lu Chow, where you can go in and you can bargain. You can get dirt cheap, like, I mean, nice stuff, it's knockoff, but like, dirt cheap. So anyway, I was in this shopping plaza, it's kind of in like, it's downtown, so it's in the expensive part of town. And this was when I didn't really know as much Chinese as I know now. So I went in and I was looking for a jacket. And um, yeah, the lady started talking to me in broken English. And I was like, okay, she speaks some English. So I was looking at jacket. She was helping me try them on. It was like this big spectacle because everyone was like surrounding me and taking pictures. And I was just kind of like, oh my God, I'm just here for a coat. That's all I want. So literally tried on a couple coats. Um, decided I want, wanted one, but it didn't have a price tag on it. So I was kind of like, how much? And she was kind of like looking around and stuff like that. And then she told me 500 UN. And I just felt really weird about it. I was like, oh, that's, that's a lot, you know? And I was trying to bargain with her, but she was kind of like, they don't bargain there. The price is the price. And so I decided not to get the coat. So I go online to Taobao, or which the English version, Bao Pals, um, and I see the same coat for like 120 UN. So it was almost five times the price that they were trying to charge me for this coat. So I was in Macau, and um, this was about a month ago, less than a month, maybe three weeks ago. And um, the hotel I was staying in, when I got there, I already booked it and paid for it online. But when I got there, they said that I needed 100 UN, which is $15, to hold the room key, like a security for the room key. I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. But I made sure I was like, I get this back when I leave. And the lady was like, yeah, yeah. So I was checking out the next morning and um, there was a guy there and I gave him the key and he was just kind of like, you know, wave me bye-bye. And I was like, <laughs> my money, bruh. Like, <laughs> give me my mm -mm. So he was just kind of like, he didn't know what was going on. I was like, yo, don't tell me they are about to try to take me for $15. Like, what do I look like? And it's more so the principle because if it would have turned into a big like thing, then I would have just left it alone. But it's the principle that because I'm a foreigner, you want to try to get over on me. Not today. Not gonna happen. You gonna learn today, okay? So I went back and forth with him. Finally, he mysteriously found my money, and I was kind of like done. Like I was so done. I had to walk out of there so fast because I wanted to really go off. But, I digress. So the main things you need to keep in mind when you're traveling out here, they will try to get over on you. So make sure you at least have an idea of what something is supposed to cost. Meters and taxis, very important. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys. So like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you guys are doing well, as always. I will see you later. Bye.